Good morning. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. I hope it's 30 minutes of my day, but I'm not sure. Um, and I said good morning. It's actually for me not morning right now, but I'm working and I thought I haven't checked in in a couple days, so I wanted to say hi. And um, I just thought, you know what, I'm sitting here working. I can, I can turn on my camera and say hi. I'm what I'm doing is um, reinforcing, actually switching around and reinforcing the pages that I want to put in for um, where'd the cover go? Ah, the chronicle, the new chronicles of Rebecca. Uh, I'm going to be putting five signatures in, and uh, two of them are fine. They fold on the correct side and uh, they're okay I wanted to be able to use the chapters in this book I'm all over the place the chapters in this book are not called chapters they're calling them first chronicle second chronicle third chronicle and so on so I wanted to actually be able to put up to five for the and one in each signature so hence I've got, I've got the fifth chronicle ready here and then I've got the fourth one ready here but some of them uh, weren't folding in the correct direction <laughs> so I had to actually cut the seam open or off and uh, and use some washi tape and uh, make it so that they bend in the correct direction this one's kind of grimy but I mean this book is how old 1907 it's an old book. It should be grimy if you were born in 1907. Now, these ones open on the correct side, but they're in really sad shape. So I am still going to reinforce them anyways because they're in such sad shape. And as you know, I, I hold it down with rocks because uh, my luck, I always bump it or I sneeze or, you know, Life happens when you're trying to glue something down. So I always glue down on a cutting mat that has graph lines on it, and that way I can watch for the lines above and below and know that I've got that I've got it basically um, straight. It doesn't need to be too straight because it's on a folded page. And I'm doing this because sometimes old paper will show the lines of the art glitter glue. Um, but I just, I don't trust glue stick for a job this important. So I'm using art glitter glue. And I'm using all green washi, the same one for all five. I love the greens, the different shades of green on the cover. So I um, I chose my greenest washi that I had. And uh, I'm using it on all five. There we go. That looks nice. Now this is, it's old, it's worn. Um... I may still, because this is kind of sad looking, I may very well still put um, like tissue or a glassine overlay. That always looks pretty. So we'll see, especially because it looks like this one either had one of the book plate pages overlaying. Um, here, let me show you. Some some books that have these book plates in, you can see here, they just put them in as an, well, sort of like an afterthought. They're not part of the binding, and they glue them down um, to a page in the book. And I have a feeling that's what happened here on the first page, but I can't remember because I've actually cut a, cut a few journals, or soon-to-be journals, open this week. Now, let's do this one. So, Second Chronicle. Oh, and another decision I made was 
Um, I'm not, because I'm using this for the first signature, I am not going to use the chapter heading for the first chronicle because this is the first chronicle in my book. And the first chronicle, I didn't like, I didn't like the chapter name. It was, I think it was Jack in the Box, something, no, Jack O' Lantern. It sounded Halloweeny. And this is not a Halloweeny book. So it just worked out well that I'd rather use the actual first page. I stuck to the rock. Um, I'd rather use the actual first page rather than Jack O' Lantern for, you know, first chronicle. So just a thin little layer of art glitter glue and smoosh it in so it's smooth. Got to work quickly. Art glitter glue dries quite quickly. Oh, I want to show you some mail I got. Hope I remember. I'm very happy to play with it and try it. Maybe I'll show you the other books I'm also working on. I was craving once again having a few books at once to work on so that when I put some aside, I can grab one and just play with it and work on something else and grab one and play with it. There we go. So first I'll show you my mail. I got mail from Australia. Let's see here. Yeah, so although although you're seeing this on Saturday morning, it's actually Friday, almost 5 p.m. Boy, I had a busy day, though. I absolutely thoroughly cleaned out my bedroom. I listed and sold a ton of stuff on Virage Sale. Um, there we go. Those are ready. Um, gosh, I was busy. Oh, I picked end papers for Rebecca. Aren't these pretty? These are from those papers from the Happy Mail that the first Happy Mail that Kelly sent me. Kelly has been spoiling me lately. In fact, it's like five o'clock in the afternoon. I can have a couple of these. Um, Anyhow, I think that's really pretty. Isn't that nice? So that's going to be the end papers. And I also think I'm going to use this. This doily also came from Kelly. It was pure white until like yesterday or the day before. I think I'm going to do a Nancy pocket. Um, because I think she invented it. I haven't seen anyone else do it. She was the first one I saw do it, but I could be wrong. So I'm open to if, if it's someone else's, I would like to give them credit. But Nancy started sewing in a doily and then she flips the one side over and then you could put like a cute little pin or a brooch or a button or tie a ribbon through both layers. But I think that just looks really pretty. I tea dyed this, but I think this is, it's, it's either cotton or linen. Um, but the way it accepted the tea, it, it was an orange Pico tea that I used. So it's kind of got a peachy, light peach color to it. And I think that looks pretty with these roses. Or, are they roses or peonies? <coughs> Sometimes those big double petal roses can look like a peony, but that looks like a rose. But that looks like a peony. So, I've heard some people pronounce that peony, but I've always pronounced them peony. My mother never had them and I loved them. Our next door neighbor, Mrs. Schultz, who we named our dog Dot after Mrs. Schultz. Um, Mrs. Schultz had all kinds of peony bushes, and oh, I just thought they were glorious. They were so beautiful, and they smelled so nice, and they were just massive, beautiful 
peonies are beautiful. They're right up there with hydrangeas in, on my, um, you know, flowers that I love book books. Okay, so let's put you in there. Let me go and find um, my Australia mail because I ordered something from Australia and it arrived and I'm thrilled with it. I haven't used it yet, but I know it's going to be good. Hold on. Let me see. Let me make sure I'm in. I'm going to stand up and make sure I'm in. Yeah, I am. Okay. So I, one of my big addictions right now is uh, watching Lori Marie Jenkins videos. She's a mixed media artist and she also does altered, altered uh, art journals, which is, I think is how I found her, but I love all of her art that she does. Um, and she uses, she uses this stencil all the time in her work. And I finally found where I could order it from this place called dark room door. And it's in Australia. It's in Tumbiumbi. I think that's it. The place Tumbiumbi, Australia. Or, I can't remember. It's Australia. Anyhow, so I ordered these three and they came so promptly, honestly, from Australia to Canada, I think it took just barely over one week. I am amazed. I've had things take, to just go across the lower part of our province take longer than that, especially with a pandemic going on. So I was absolutely thrilled with how quickly they got it packaged and in the mail and then how quickly and I know it's out of their control once it's in the mail but it just whoop, off it went here it was she had it wrapped with this beautiful chocolate brown grosgrain ribbon and oh here's all the information let me hold it up so if you if you're interested in going over to see what they've got darkroom door and Rachel Great. so um if this is my first time ordering, but I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, she also sent a lovely little thank you note, which I thought was very nice. And she also sent a little bonus thing. She, she sent me a little, a little stamp and it says friends. Isn't that cute? I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to have to put it on something. I thought that was awfully nice. Didn't expect that, but anyhow, so I don't know if Rachel, if you'll ever see this or not, but thank you very much. And uh, yeah, it says here, dark room door, rubber stamps and craft supplies. Darkroomdoor.com. Let's look at this one. I'm excited to try that one. Isn't that cool looking? And I like that it's a little rough. It's not a perfect, um, what do they call this diamond? Oh, it's, on, I, it's right there. It's, it's on the tip of my tongue. And do you think, chevron? Is that it? Chevron? I know if it was a sweater and it had a, an extra line through them, it would be argyle. <laughs> My mom made me an Argyle sweater once. Oh, I loved that sweater. It was so pretty. Um, anyhow, yeah. So I'm very excited to maybe have some me time and and play in my uh, in my art journal, my art altered art journal. This little baby. So um, I can't remember if we. Hi, Mrs. Cushman. If I showed you when I finished. Oh dear. Uh, hey. Um, the paper dolls. There's my mom and dad. And they go in that pocket. And then my brothers are over here. And then I'm, I'm right there. So I've got another page ready and I want to incorporate that somehow. I think I want to have little Catherine looking out the window. 
So maybe, maybe Sunday, maybe tomorrow, I'll be able to have a little playtime and, and work in my altered book for a little while. Okay, let's get this out of the way, and I'll show you the other two books that I've actually got started on. I was craving, even though I'm really enjoying New Chronicles of Rebecca, I was craving doing an all sorts book. So I actually started two. Let me go get the other one that's across the room. All right. <laughs> I don't know if I have room on my desk to, help, to put both of them here. Let's clear off some space, get this glue out of the way. All right, so the first one is um, Innocence and Experience. So, and I did start taping the work I did on this, so I'll be releasing it at some point if you're interested. I just taped when I was gutting it and that and how I got it, which is really it that part of doing an old book restoring it doesn't really change it restored really nicely very happy with um with how that spine turned out and she is going on the front not nice so i'm very excited about this one and i've got i'm starting on choosing papers this book that each it, it actually is a bunch of short stories, and each short story had its own front page. How cool is that? So I chose a few that I liked, and uh, again, that will be in the video that I post later on when I got started on this. But I'll be gluing this on the way I like to do, and then I will be putting um, brass brads here so so that's one of the other ones and then I got out um, a good old journeys through bookland Isn't that cool love that picture with the ship on it I have the uh, entire series of these so I at some point you're going to see a lot of these because I have 10 of them this is volume 8 so there's the text block. Um, it's going to need some serious repair work here, but I can work that. That's not bad. I will try my best to seal it from the inside out. And then if I need to, I can put a gold band across it with some tiny little um, brads. I've done that before. I think I did that on everybody's cyclopedia. And then I'll match it up maybe. Maybe I'll do both top and bottom. I've already made the curved spine to go into it, but I haven't taken it out yet. So I'm just going to put this back in here for now. The end papers were not salvageable, even though they're very pretty, aren't they? Um, the, fr the front end paper had been cut off. So I just, I pulled it off and the, actually the text block, I didn't even have to cut it out. It basically just fell out. <laughs> so this just came right off and uh, it fell out. So, and then the back, again, it uh, wasn't savable, even though it's pretty, but I absolutely will use these. I'll use it somewhere else. And I'll give it some pretty end papers. I've got 10 of these books. So like I said, you're, you're probably going to get sick of seeing them before I even halfway through restoring all of them. I can see with some of them, I may switch out this front and put in, um, and put in another illustration. There's lots of illustrations in these books, color panels. Oh, not you, Charles Lamb. There we go. There's one. They're very pretty. Little Ellie sits alone. Isn't that pretty? Quite a few in here. So, 
thought there was one near the front. Oh, there we go. Prospero and Miranda from The Tempest. So, oh, Toronto. Yay. My hometown. What year is this? 1922. So it's 99 years old. No wonder it fell apart. I got really excited when I saw the woman's name there. At first I thought it said Spillet, and that's my mother's family name. Her great-great-grandmother was, uh, last name was Spillet, and they've been here in Canada since ooh, the 1840s. Pretty early. So, so that is... These are the other books that I'm that I'm going to be working on. In addition to uh, working on the new Chronicles of Rebecca, I'm very happy with how that turned out. I love I love when you can still see this for the time being, but it will get covered up. <laughs> it will get pretty end papers on it. Well, there we go. Thanks for visiting with me. It wasn't a full thirty minutes. But I wanted to say hi. I hadn't been I hadn't been online in, in a few days. So I wanted to say hi and good morning. So uh, take care and have a great rest of your day. Uh, that's what I'm going to do too. That's my plan. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Bye.